With more millionaires than ever before, an old industry is seeing a booming resurgence, the butler industry. In Southern California alone, the government reports a 67% increase in private household workers over the past five years. Today, butlering has emerged as one of the fastest growing occupations in the U.S. And for more on this, we are happy to be joined by Mary Louise Starkey. She is the founder and president of the Starkey International Institute in Denver, Colorado and known around the country as the First Lady of Service. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So uh, first of all, tell us a bit about this boom in, uh, in, in butlering. This, this stuff is not cheap, is it? No, sir, it's not cheap. Um, but we prefer to call them household managers. Butling might have a bit of a British twang to it. So uh, household management is the American term. All right, we're also joined actually right now, just joining us is Robert Frank, who is the author of a book called Richestan. Robert, how are you? Good, thanks for having me. Good, so uh, your book kind of details some of the, the wealth boom that has led to this, uh, this resurgence in butlering. Tell us about, first of all, the boom in wealth in this country. Just how exorbitant has it been? Well, the number of millionaires in the United States has more than doubled over the past decade. There are now more than nine million millionaire households in the U.S. And when you talk about uh, household managers, as Ms. Starkey was just talking about, typically a household manager is required for a house that's uh, over 5,000 square feet. The number of those big homes, those over 5,000 square feet homes, has more than quintupled over the last 10 years. So you've got all this wealth, all those big homes, you need someone to staff them. That is, a, those, those numbers are quite staggering. So, Mary Louise Starkey, when, when you look at butlering today, how is it different than it was when you think about the old school butlering uh, with the, you know, the, the jackets and ties and the British accent usually? Well, I think the old tradition was more of a servitude position and the spouse that managed the home, typically the wife, uh, really ran the home. Today's world, the household manager really runs the home. Uh, it's about service. Service is the expertise, and you have to know everything about uh, intelligent home technology to uh, how to entertain on an international basis. You need to know really how to how to corner vendors and make sure that they deliver what they say they're going to deliver, and all while knowing how to uh, prepare a spa meal cuisine for the principals. So what does it go into, what goes into training people as you do to, to serve as, as uh, we're, we're calling them butlers here, but household managers as you say, how much training is really involved? Well it's a 365 hour course uh, spread out over eight weeks, but typically the, the days are 12 to 14 hour days. They, cut, they lovingly call us butler boot camp because hmm. if, they, if um, they can make it in Starkey, they can typically make it in a private home. Wow. We're tough. That's, I, I can imagine so. You have to be tough sometimes. So, Robert, you know, why are people today opting for this? Obviously, there's some necessity, but how much of this is status? You know, the idea of having the live-in butler or live-in maid or a couple of them in some cases. Right. Well, it, it's really more, uh, as Ms. Starkey was just pointing out, really a matter of necessity. These people are building such big homes that are so complex with the amount of technology involved, the amount of, as she put it, the number of vendors who serve their homes. I, I interviewed a guy in Richestan who had 30 vendors. These are people who care for everything from the lawn to the French faucets. These, these homes are really like businesses. And you really need a corporate manager, a, a business manager, someone who's trained in technology, in finance, in managing a large staff to run these homes. So it's because of the complexity of today's houses that you really need a, a sort of CFO or COO of My Life Inc. for these guys. Mrs. Starkey, are you teaching them all of these things, finance and accounting, and I mean all the kinds of things that you may actually need to, to run a 10,000 square foot home? Over the years, the curriculum has uh, grown and become 20 more times sophisticated than when we began. Mr. Frank is absolutely correct. You need a, I recruit people from the corporate world so that when we come back into the school, these individuals 
uh, come with management and uh, life experience hmm. so that they're able to truly manage lifestyles. Why does someone and manage them? Why does someone who's worked in, in the corporate world in, in some form or another, what, what do they see as the benefit of becoming, uh, you know, essentially a butler for someone working in someone else's home? Well, I can tell you most people say that they never have two days uh, the same. Uh, boredom is long gone for a continued challenge. And you know, really, underneath it all, people prefer to make a difference in someone's life as opposed to pushing paper. Hmm. Very interesting. Now, Robert, in terms of the economy, you know, we're talking about big bucks here, obviously, but these service people are actually making pretty good money, too. So does this have a positive impact, not only in terms of having that many rich people who can afford them, but the fact that they're, they're paying these, serv these servants so much? Yeah, and I would add to, to what Mary was just talking about. You know, what, why is it that someone would leave a corporate job and go into household management? Well, these household management jobs today, the starting pay is usually around seventy to eighty thousand dollars. I interviewed a number of household managers who were making between one twenty and two hundred thousand dollars. Now, a lot of these people get free room and board at their houses. They get to travel to exotic locations. They might uh, get to be in the Hamptons in the summer or in Palm Beach in the winter. And there's a, an enormous amount of freedom and lifestyle that's attached to this. So it's great pay. It's very flexible hours, and, and there's enormous amount of, you, you know, look, who wouldn't want to live on a gorgeous estate in the Hamptons in the summer and, and a nice one in Palm Beach in the winter? So economically, these jobs are incredibly rewarding today, and they truly have become a profession instead of just uh, being a servant. And Mrs. Starkey, these, these things turn into long-standing relationships a lot of the time, don't they? You might start out thinking you'll work for a family for a year or two, but there are situations where you could work 10 years or more for a family. So they, they almost become part of the family after a while, don't they? Stark International provides a lifelong placement for our graduates. And uh, unfortunately, I don't get too many of them back. So, yes, sir, it is a very long service in the end is a relationship. Well, job security is always a good thing, too. So, uh, boy, this is uh, a another sign of the boom in wealth we're having in this country. And I want to thank Robert Frank and Mary Louise Starkey for joining us and telling us more about it. For more information, you can check out the new book, Richest Stan, by Mr. Frank at bookstores everywhere and starkeyinternational.com if you think that may be a career for you.